And now let's move on to some branding in the age of COVID-19. The pandemic has forever changed the way we think and behave and feel. And in your colleague's article, Sound in the Age of COVID-19, which can be found on Manmade Music website, Amy Crawford writes something very interesting. With the uncertainty and disruption this pandemic brought to the lives of people all over the world, how we connect and the tone of that connection needs to evolve and the soundtracks to ads and marketing efforts need to evolve as well. No matter how great the creative may be, if the sound is wrong, brands would literally come across tone deaf, insensitive and out of touch. So based on an article, walk us through the importance of brands to adopt to this change to stay relevant and connected to the new now. Yeah, I think it's all about creating something that is based from a flexible foundation, um, a flexible foundation that's going to continue, continue to deliver on what you need to deliver, but um, you're able to, to move very quickly. And we'll talk about some brands who did it really seamlessly. And I think that you, you, know, you tend to see brands who are experts in, in quick transformation. Um, and some of those, you know, uh, McDonald's, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about. Um, I thought that um, music, at least in the, the US, that Facebook put out during that time was very smart. They used them under pressure, um, but it had an interesting tonality to it. And it was about connection. Um, again, building from a foundation that your brand has worked hard to own. So how is it that your brand can communicate empathy and it doesn't feel like it's outside of, of the authenticity of your brand? And I think people, you know, you can hear from folks who say, oh, well, that's not the kind of brand that we are, but any type of brand can be that brand. And, you know, one of the companies that I, I've spent a lot of time uh, reading about recently is, is Vans. And they're a shoe company and a shoe company that has, that's very based in music, but they work so hard to be purpose-driven that when they had to turn and their messaging turned, it, it felt 100% authentic to who they were as a brand and a company. So, you know, like I tend to do, I don't, I don't wanna make it about the music first. I wanna make it about the sort of purpose-driven brand that you're building and building a purpose-driven brand allows you to be flexible and move into music and messaging and an overall experience that people will be like, yeah, they're, they're not full of it. And you guys, you got the opportunity uh, to actually do a study. So in October last year, uh, Mame Music released uh, a very interesting study, which you guys did together with the research company, Sentient Decision Science. And here you investigated whether the current culture shifts in the US due to COVID-19 impacted how brands are perceived. You mm -hmm. sought to determine whether brand sonic signature are helping or hindering that perception. Uh, so I'm excited having you share this with us. So please share the methodology and the findings. Again, like so much of this conversation, it was an accident that we did this during COVID. We planned it in, in Q1. We said we're going to field it in Q2. And by the time we got to Q2, it was a different world. Um, it fielded the, the second week in June. And how important that moment is in the, the results was something that was really, it wasn't lost on us, but it was a bit of an accident to say, oh, wow, this is really, this is really changing the, the curve of results that we've, we've seen in the past. Um, the methodology, um, you know, we've worked with Sentient for some time and what we love about them is it, uh, their methodology levels up to our um, intention, which is it's never about the sound of music. So we, we don't want to be too precious about the sound and music. It's about the experience. It's about the message. It's about whatever the thing is that's holding the sound and music. So if we're touching, testing a digital app, we don't ask about the uh, music in the app or the sound in the app. We test the app without sound and with sound. And the goal is to move scores like how easy was it to use? How enjoyable was the experience? Would you recommend it to somebody else? so that with sound, those scores move. Um, because when you ask people about sound and music, and I'm sure you've had this experience, Jasmine, sometimes you can get really odd responses that are not about what you actually, what, <laughs> what a brand cares about. Like, well, I was a drummer in high school, so I really like something that's more percussive. And you're like, oh, it, it. The subjective um, comes out. The subjective comes out. The subjective the comes, comes out. out. Yeah. Correct. And, you know, 
personally, I think that there's something people really, um, we tap into a, a weird center of ego where, where some people want to appear cool and music like feels like a coolness test. Um, and like, I can just like, I am the least cool person ever. Um, so I really try to, 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 uh, you know, for, for clients, a lot of what I do is say like, there is no wrong answer here. There's no, this isn't a music test. It is not um, a coolness test. There's, we need to understand how this makes you feel. And that's what it is that we're, we're trying to get to. So the methodology does just that. And we're looking to test um, the subconscious emotional appeal. So on a gamified mobile or computer app, how appealing was the sound? And that is based on um, how quickly you choose answers um, and, and cognitive dissonance that's created in your brain that affects the speed or correctness of your answers, um, as well as attributes and how this sound and the logo relate to the attribute. And then at the very end, we ask about the sound itself. So what was really interesting is in that moment, which is again, the second week of June, which I think is really important, brands closely tied to recovery or our societal idea of recovery um, had more to gain from Sonic branding. So we looked at 16 brands who use Sonic logos as, alongside visual logos and only three brands in that moment where Sonic identity provided a significant lift in trust were Southwest Airlines, and that's that clap, clap, ding, which is very um, reminder of travel, a reminder of airline travel, that thing that we were like, oh, when are we going to get there again? Abbott Healthcare, you know, a company that is based on health and bringing people forward, the, the piano and their melody and tonality really is based in this idea of empathy and science and bringing together those two things. And ZipRecruiter, this company where it's all about like getting back to work in that moment where like, I've lost a job. Am I going to lose a job? Sound helps support those brands um, where we were in terms of society. And these were a little bit different than scores that we've seen in the past. Um, McDonald's itself, and, and here's what's really interesting about McDonald's. And I, I say to them, like I, I pointed to them as a brand that moves quickly and was very flexible because we tested the original Sonic logo and it had um, a significantly lower emotional appeal versus the visual logo known. And that's that classic um, instrumental ba da ba ba ba. At the same time, we were doing the study, they swapped out their advertising and they had a voice that very gently said ba da ba ba ba. And it, that, was like, it was like, oh, they're already on it. Like they know that that old perky instrumental version isn't going to work for them. And from my perspective, they made the, the perfect change in that moment. Um, and so it, it was just really interesting to see, but a brand who can move quickly, who has been using Sonic for a long time in ways that move their brand forward, that they were all over it. Um, is, is that the, because they start understanding that there's a lot of more like, touch points coming out or that became too old what, what, I mean if you I could, think it was that tonally it was tonally that track um there's a lot of uh there's a lot of cultural significance behind it and how we've always heard it and how it's always been extremely upbeat in that moment that you were like you know McT McDonald's, like, let's go, you know, always like very optimistic in terms of its messaging. And they made a quick turn to still be messaging McDonald's, but in a tone that was a bit more grounded for the moment, a bit more neutral, but done in a really quirky and clever way where it still stood out. It didn't feel inappropriate, um, but it wasn't the old that was, that was testing so poorly when we married it up to, to a visual logo. Interesting. Um, so, you know, I think it's interesting how many of the, the Sonic and visual logo lockup fell further into a negative territory of 97.8. And there was a neutral or negative impact on scores like high quality, innovative, on my side, trustworthy and unique. Um, and even weirdly enough, the attribution of the sound fell, which was such an interesting, like, you know, this is not different than it was before, but I think it was so cognitively dissonant for people in that moment that they were like, I can't think about this old life I used to live when McDonald's was a normal place to be in. Um, like I said, we tested because of the timing of it, we tested the, the really classic logo and they made a, a move in that moment. And I really applaud them for it um, because I think we were seeing the effects of what could have been if they hadn't moved so quickly. Uh, great, so let me go on to, the next one, and you know, I think that this is the one that got a lot of attention, and it's really, Netflix is such an interesting 
sound. Um, in my conversations, qualitatively, I can I feel like working with creatives, I feel like it's very divisive. Like I hear people be like, I love it. And then every once in a while I hear somebody who's like, I really hate it, which is so interesting. Um, and it definitively fell in the second week of June than it had tested before. Now, what's interesting is consciously, it was the third most preferred sound overall. So people are like, it's Netflix, I like it. I'm sitting there, you know, like I know what it means. I'm in my house a lot, but the Sonic logo had a lower emotional appeal than the visual logo alone. So when you put up a visual of Netflix, people were like 114.5, which is a very high score. You married it to that very dark dun dun and the score overall uh, dropped. What was interesting is that some positive attributes did go up versus the visual alone. So high quality. Well, guess what? We're spending a lot of time with Netflix. And I think people are probably discovering in that yeah. moment. And the dun dun does add some of that theatrical <laughs> uh, resonance to it. Trustworthy. They know what they're going to get and that they're going to get quality content. And this is very similar to what we saw in, with HBO in the past and unique. So um, when you tested those attributes with Sonic, they did go up, um, but the, the overall score went down. And there is a, a 3% increase in recall, which is pretty significant um, versus the N only. So it's interesting that people, I would have thought the N would have tested very strongly as having high uh, ink, but adding the sound does help them with recall. Wow. And it is high at 48.5. Yeah. And I'm not going to ask you then. So what do you, when you hear the Netflix uh, <laughs> sound, what, um, makes, what does it make you feel? Because I have an answer to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do think it's very dark. I would say that I'm neutral to it. I like this story behind it. And um, I think that that is when, um, which I feel, you know, Netflix obviously doesn't talk about, but there's a, a scene at the end of House of Cards where Kevin Spacey banged on the desk and it was the last scene of, of the first season of House of Cards and he bangs on the desk and they took that sound and moved that forward into this sonic identity. Now, okay, what people are problematic, unfortunately, so they're not going to talk about that. But for me, having a little story behind why was this representative of your brand and the idea that it was like, it was their first tentpole show that was hugely specific and um, are hugely successful and started to, to build that brand and that empire. I like that piece of it. Interesting. What about you, Jess? Well, for me, it, it's interesting because it, in terms of like, when I hear it, it's normally I watch Netflix either during breaks when I work or in the evening. So for me, it's a sound of comfort that mm -hmm. now I can take the time to relax from my work. Now mm -hmm. I can watch something that I can enjoy, like there's an excitement coming to me. And for me, that means a lot because I love working, but I need to also learn to uh, rewind. <laughs> so that sound gives me of this is the moment that you can get the chance to relax. Right. It's tied to a behavior. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So it's comfort. <laughs> mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. And home and home. And home. Exactly. And I think that maybe that's part of it is at that moment, how... Um, I don't think the visual end makes you think of home. I think the sound does. Yes. And in that moment, how did we feel about home? Mm. I, I don't think we were 100% sure. At least here in the US, we were in our, you know, going into our third month of lockdown with no end in sight. Yes. Um, I do think it's important to point out like some of the things that we found that were very inspiring for us, the Alzheimer's Association, which is a sonic logo that we did some time ago. Um, Let's again talk about building brands with purpose and that purpose then being flexible to any situation or environment. The Alzheimer's Association obviously built their brand with high, high empathy, a high, high note on, on understanding and science. And that's what that logo conveyed. So in this moment, and it's never tested this high before, but it was the second most preferred sound overall versus the visual logo alone. It had significantly higher emotional appeal. So think about, you see the Alzheimer's Association logo and it says Alzheimer's Association. And I think you can't help, you know they do good things, but your brain is like Alzheimer's. 
happens if you hold it, you hear those notes of uplift and empathy. And it's like, oh no, it's the Alzheimer's association. Like they are working to help, they are working to overcome. So it's interesting the, the, the changes in perception that happen there. And that's more of the standard that we see across brands. I think in this very odd moment, Alzheimer's had a, an additional lift from that. And then in terms of the, the logo lockup, the Sonic and logo lockup versus the visual logo alone, uh, higher quality, more innovative, more trustworthy, more unique than just the logo alone. And again, it's just, it's bringing emotion to the brand in a way that you don't get from visuals alone and an increase of recall of 9%, which is quite significant. It is. And, and out of the study, what, what learnings would you then give to other brands? The learnings from the study, I, I think we were surprised. I think that there, I still need to understand the effects of things like baby laughter on those naturally occurring sounds that we accidentally test and how under, and understand how they affect the psyche. But the number one learning for brands is building for flexibility, working um, with a construction that can move and retain attribution and recall while still moving. And this sort of bigger loftier goal, which I think should be a goal of everyone of building, building with purpose for, mm -hmm. for humans and people so that when you need to move quickly, um, that message doesn't feel inauthentic. And, and regarding the, the, the baby laughter, were you able of like asking them why, or was it just the one? No, yeah. because it was such a surprise. We didn't have a qualitative sell on baby laughter. We just got the scores and we're like, what happened to baby laughter? This tank. <laughs> um, so, you know, of course we, we're doing this study yearly. So again, the second week of June where the we're going to be in a very different place than we were last June, we hope. And that, you know, at least that's what um, it looks like at this point that we, we could have like a pretty good summer, maybe a dip in the fall again, but it'll be interesting to see how these scores moved and changed. And then again in 2022. So I think that this is just a rolling point of learning that we're going to have to keep continue looking because it's, again, it's not about the sound. It's kind of about human experience mm. in these moments mm. and how it changes the smallest moments in our relationships to brands and messaging. Mm. And, um, what are your predictions? Do you have any thoughts of what's gonna come out? Yeah, um, this is an interesting thing to say. I think it's going to be partially dependent on what the weather is like by June, because I do think that the, from a, um, a freedom perspective and how people feel that they can like reconnect to people and they're reconnecting to things, I think a lot of it is going to be June's a little early, you know, July. I think that we would be in that place where people are getting together outdoors. There's more of a sense of community than there was last summer as the vaccines are rolling out. Um, I hope that baby laughter will be back up in terms of the score. And it'll be interesting to see how the other brands rank and follow suit. But if I'm being honest, my most interesting point is how are people going to feel about, about baby laughter? Oh, I'm excited to, to hear it once it's ready. <laughs> yeah.